Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, we will see how to build this electrostatic motor and the explanation of how it works. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, Upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. In order for the axis where the syringe rests does not go through the hole, I will put this little cap from the positive terminal of a AA battery. I fixed it with a bit of epoxy putty and also the CD-ROM is glued to the base of the syringe using also epoxy glue. Now you can insert an axis and the CD-ROM plus the syringe can spin freely. Here you can see the axis that I fixed to a wooden base and the disc spinning. It is important that the axis is perfectly vertical so that the disc spins without wobbling. The next step is to put these pieces of copper on the disc. I used this commercial copper tape which has adhesive which is very handy and I cut six circles to put on the disc. Of course, you can use another type of metal. For example, you can use aluminum foil from your kitchen, cut it and glue it with normal glue. It also doesn't have to be circles. You can use squares or another geometry. And later we will explain why we need these pieces of conductor on the surface of the disc. This motor needs high voltage in order to work, at least 5000 volts and more if you live in a humid place, which is my case. So I'm going to use this little high voltage power supply that can give you up to 25000 volts. Finally, you need to place a couple of soda cans, aluminum cans, at each side of the rotor without touching it at a distance of around 5 to 10 millimeters and you need to connect the high voltage power supply to the cans positive terminal and negative and here you can see the little high voltage power supply you also need to put a couple of wires at each side of the cans that go close to the disc but also without touching it. And now I'm going to turn on power to see it work. We can see that the motor wobbles when it is spinning at fast speed. So to prevent this, I added this plastic cap with a small hole in the center of a diameter slightly larger than that of the axis. So it will run smoothly without the lateral movement. Let's see if it works.
Now let's use more voltage. Let me now explain how the motor works, which is actually very simple. It is the concept of electrostatic attraction and repulsion. That is, equal charges repel and different charges attract. Remember that this can is connected to the positive terminal and this one to the negative terminal. Since we are dealing with very high voltage, we have electrostatic induction. So, the copper discs that are close to the positive can and the wire will be positively charged. And those close to the other can and wire will be negatively charged. So, these discs are repelled from this can and tend to move in this way. At the same time, they are also attracted to the negative can. So they are repelled from here and attracted to here. And the motor turns in this way. Also, at the other side, we have the same effect. These discs are negatively charged and are repelled from the negative can and attracted to the positive can. So the net effect is that the disc spins in this way. Of course, if we invert the polarity, positive here and negative here, the disc will spin to the other side. Once you have your cans connected to the high voltage power supply, it is very easy to make the Franklin's Bells experiment. Here I have a steel ball connected to a fine thread, non-conductive thread, and when I bring the ball close to the cans, it will start to move. The ball is alternatively charged positive and negative and attracted and repelled from both cans. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you liked the video and that you build your own electrostatic motor. Thank you and see you in the next one.